Hey guys, it's Funk Roberts here, Metabolic Conditioning Coach, Module Number Seven. And this module, we're going to talk about work periods, periods, and energy systems. And in the past, we did touch on energy systems, but in this module, we're going to dig a little bit deeper. And as for as like some of the other modules, we are going to be breaking this up into different parts, so small bite-sized chunks to help you process the information better. So first, let's start talking about energy systems. All right, so. As you, as you go about getting geared up to deliver your metabolic training workouts to clients, it's important that you come to understand about the various energy systems that are going to come into play. Now, an energy system refers to how the body utilizes energy to create muscular contractions during exercise. As you're about to see, the energy that is used heavily depends on the type of exercise being performed. Intense exercise requires a totally different fuel substrate than lower intensity exercise does. So by gaining this understanding of the energy systems and how they are connected with the type of exercise being performed, you're going to be able to adjust and adapt your workouts to meet the preferences and needs of your clients. One of the biggest determining factors that will influence the nature of the energy system that's being used is the total work interval done during your metabolic training. The longer the work interval is, the lower the intensity it needs to be done at, therefore the different the energy systems will be. Certain work periods will be more favorable, for example, to help the client burn fat, while other work intervals will be better attuned to helping them, mac them maximize muscle building or their cardiovascular output. So let's begin our first discussion with some information about the two energy systems available. So the first one is the anaerobic system. We talked about this previously, but just as a refresher, the anaerobic system by definition means without oxygen. This is the energy system that is utilized when you're performing exercise at an intensity level that is so intense the body's not able to utilize oxygen as a means of deriving fuel. Instead, the body needs to rely on the readily available energy source that is already existing within the muscle cells. So when you think of anaerobic training, you want to think of high, like insanely high intense training. Training that's done at such an exertion level that you can't sustain it for any length of time. Anaerobic training would encompass interval training, interval sprint training, uh, intense weightlifting, or stop and go sprint type sports that require you to put forth maximum effort to make a play. So the next system, the second type of system you need to know about is the aerobic system, which means with oxygen. Now this system that's called is called into play when you're exercising at a more moderate intensity level where the body is able to utilize oxygen to generate fuel. You know, when you think of aerobics, you may think of step aerobics and another fitness type classes where participants are exercising for up to an hour at a time. Now, while this could be one way of looking at aerobic system, um, this is by far not the only way to approach it. So an exercise that, um, and any exercise that you're exercise longer than 90 to 120 seconds would be classified as aerobic training. Also keep in mind that these energy systems can alternate depending on the intensity of the exercise at hand. So you're not always in just one system or the other, but rather it can be a blended mix as you go about your workout protocol. All right, so now let's get into some detail about the three different ways fuel or ATP can be derived. This is important. So before we begin to talk about the following systems, it's important to note that the energy currency your muscles use to perform any sort of muscular contraction is ATP. Now this stands for adenosine triphosphate and is what powers each and every move you make. So how your body gets ATP depends on the situation at hand. It will depend on your phosphagen system or anaerobic, your glycosis system, uh, anaerobic, oh, sorry, glycolysis system, which is anaerobic, and your oxidative system, which is aerobic. And we talked about this in previous modules, but again, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into this so you can see how it works in regards to work periods. So the first method of deriving ATP is through the phosphagen system, which is defined as an anaerobic system. This means that this system will get called into play when you're performing exercise at a high intensity level. 
It t it's typically the energy system that comes into play when the exercise you're doing lasts about 10 to 20 seconds in duration and it utilizes primar primarily your type 2 muscle fibers. So think of this as your all-out energy system. You know, when you're going to give 110% of effort to complete the exercise, be it like sprint interval or intense weightlifting. So this energy system will not produce lactic acid and relies on the formation of ATP from ADP or adenosine diphosphate which resides in the muscle cell along with creatine phosphate uh, which you have or we have a natural supply of in the body. When creatine phosphate stores run out no fur further ATP can be produced and as such that's when the high intensity exercise needs to stop and or another energy system needs to take over. This often, uh, this often ends up with a decrease in your exercise intensity. So this is also one big reason why people choose to supplement with creatine phosphate because by adding external creatine phosphate to the body, you ensure your stores are fully saturated. Therefore, you're able to best replenish the ATP and sustain intense exercise for a longer period of time. It's this system that's going to be utilized when you're focusing on primarily developing high levels of strength and power. You might also hear this system as being described as the alactic system, which includes any exercise being done to a maximum intensity and lasting up to 12 seconds in duration. Now remember, lactic acid does not get produced in the system and it's short in duration for lactic acid to start coming into the picture. It's too short for lactic acid to start coming into the picture. The next way in which energy can be produced as you move through your workout is through the process called glyco glycolysis. This occurs when there's a breakdown of carbohydrates from either the blood bloodstream due to carbs that you ate previously at a meal or from breakdown of muscle glycogen, which is a storage form of carbohydrates in your muscle cell. Now this system, just like phosphagen sy system listed above, occurs without the use of oxygen, but in doing so, it produces a byproduct called lactic acid, which is what gives the muscles that burning sensation as further exercise aims to be performed. Like I know for sure you and most of your clients and athletes have definitely experienced, uh, experienced this before. Anytime you're doing a higher rep intense weightlifting set, by, t by the time you get to you know 10 to 12 reps, which is beyond 20 seconds, you start noticing that intense burning sensation taking place. And this is the accumulation of lactic acid in the muscle cell. Now, this system will produce energy from the point of about 20 seconds up to 60 seconds, at which point another system must take over with the intensity level lowered or exercise must cease to continue. Now, this, this system is one that is focused on strength and power endurance as you'll see by exercising with great intensity, but the intensity level will not be quite as high as it would be in the system above. So as such, you prim primarily rely on your type 2A muscle fibers when doing the exercise at this level. You can work this system by working at your lactic threshold, which is an intensity just below the lactic begins to develop in the muscle cell, prompting you to stop exercising entirely. Hope that makes sense. Finally, the last system that will come into play to produce energy is the oxi oxidative system. Now, this system is primarily is the primary energy system that takes place at rest, as well as during low intensity activities. Even just sitting there right now, as you're listening to this, your oxidative system is working hard, keeping your brain processing this sen sentence, keeping your lungs taking in oxygen, and ensuring that your liver continue continues to filter from the body filter waste from the body. Now this system is highly flexible as it has the ability to utilize fats as well as carbs as its fuel source. Thus, activity using the oxidative system doesn't demand proper pre-workout nutrition or supplementation. That's something that your clients may want to know. Now, this system is able to utilize oxygen as a way of producing ATP from the breakdown of fats in the body or throughout utilizing the muscle glycogen if readily available. 
Because it utilizes oxygen, this also means that it tends to occur when you're doing lower intensity activities and takes place when you reach about the 60 to 90 second mark of an intense activity. And at this point, obviously intensity decreases and the oxidative system kicks in. And from there, it stays your primary source of energy production unless enough rest is given that the body can replenish its stores of ATP and creatine phosphate or lactic acid is removed, and then you can transition back into higher intensity exercise. And you see that a lot with metabolic training. That's how we set it up so that you have high intensity, you get a little rest so that you can restore, and then you go back to another high intensity session. But back to the oxidative system, this system primarily uses the type 2B as well as the type 1 muscle fibers and produces weak muscular contractions. It's a system that's focused on endurance type uh, exercises that demand you to go for a long period of time without suffering fatigue. With the oxidative system, there is no limit to how long exercise can last as most adults have pounds and pounds worth of it stored in the body and the body fat and that it can be tapped for fuel. So remember that it's very possible to combine energy systems in one workout by simply adjusting your protocol that is being performed and moderating the rest and work periods being utilized. The energy system that will come into play at any given moment depends on the intensity of the exercise being performed, which is defined as a level of power output in a given time. All right, so we're going to we're going to break right there. I hope you understand and that gives you a little more uh, deeper understanding of the energy systems and how it relates to the type of muscles that are being used and the type of work periods and uh, intensity of the exercise that's taking place. All right, so I'll take I'll uh, I'll uh, see you in part two of module seven.